this. How's it going? This is me. Relaxed wave. A. S. M. R. And today, I'll be showing you guys a video on me telling you guys a story. Now, uh, this is going to be a story. Just kind of keep the mood. Just kind of, just kind of keep the mood. Kind of of this nice relaxation. workers 
society of about a good 2,000 people, or maybe more, maybe let's say about 3,000 people that lived in this sort of uh, society. society. It was there. And everybody was assigned something at birth. Um, when people get married, they would be assigned a job and they would have to do that job and they would have to go to a school for that job. And basically, is that when the person was five years old, they would be sent out of the Maplewood Farms, and um, they would um, go to the sacred land, and the sacred society. Uh, nobody, uh, there was no crime. Uh, there was no out of order in the society. And everybody did their job. And nobody socialized with anybody except for what they needed to at their job. Outside of their job, side of work was forbidden. Now, this whole society was functioning very well, and nobody had any curiosity as to how the society worked, where the society came from. society has to go to sleep at 9 o'clock and they have to wake up at 9 o'clock and basically everybody when they go to the sacred land has implants these uh, sort of cyborg implants that are implanted into their head so that um, they're controlled by the sacred of the outside world uh, that's outside of the 20 mile radius and basically um, what happened is um, the society functioned for a very long time actually thousands of years it was the same
this. So, and the population always stayed the same. So if there was, so there was uh, never too many people, and there was never too little people because they would always bring people in and they would always bring people out. So one day, there was this person that died, and the population was at 2,999. And this was the day that the sacred people didn't have any more people to bring except for this one person. And this was the last person in the world because there was no more resources in the world and the way that people were being made uh, where they were being genetically modified by artificial intelligence you know being grown in a lab okay and that's how people were being built and after thousands of years of this one structured society found out, you know, that this was going to be the last person, and now this person was different. Um, they couldn't get the implant into their head for some reason. Uh, the DNA just wasn't accepting this implant into the head, this um, sort of cyborg implant into the head. So, they decided, you know, this is the only person we have left, and we're just going to need to put him in without the implant, so we're not going to be able to control him, and everybody's like, but we need to do something, we need to have something that will, you know, tell him when to go to bed, because if he wakes up and nobody else is awake and he sees us, then what's he going to do? He's going to get suspicious, and these were just robots talking to each other about what to do with this very last human in the world. And um, they decided to bring him to Maplewood Farms. And um, he lived for the first five years noticed that he was very different from everybody because um, he was always curious. He was always walking away from the house and uh, walking for very far until the policemen uh, would bring him back. And um, of course he would get really angry and he would yell at his parents, but his parents wouldn't say anything because they're only allowed to talk um, at, when they're um, at work. So he would just get really mad and um, nothing would happen. And finally, it was time uh, for him to go back and uh, get a job. was assigned a job um, he was not and we're going to call this person um, we're going to call him Tim okay Tim was never assigned a job because uh, the implant wouldn't go in so there was a random software that would actually assign people um, jobs and it never worked for him so he was never assigned a job was five and he was brought back to the uh, sacred lands um, they decided that um, they were going to try and um, put you know this 
snake in his head. And so after trying and trying, they finally, um, after um, 15 years, uh, assigned him a job and somehow put the implants in his head. his DNA wouldn't accept it so they would have to just keep doing it and keep doing it and so he was always told that if he didn't put in the implants then he would die and of course he remembered back to when he was uh, five and he said well I didn't die then and they said that um, yeah but that was when you were young and it doesn't work the same way when you're older and they tried to you know brainwash him into thinking that um it's not true, you know, this is, you know, you just have to keep doing this or else you'll die, and so he was given, like, an infinite amount of no-brain implants, and said that, like, these cyborg implants, and said that if you didn't do this, then you would die, and, um, <coughs> basically, his job was... Basically, he would just uh, fly from uh, places in the 20 mile radius, and um, that's just what he would do. He would fly and uh, bring goods to places. And uh, he did his job. he was different, he thinked a little bit differently, you know, what if I didn't put in my implant for one month, what would happen, and basically, uh, he did put in his implants for one month, and he started noticing different things that he hasn't noticed before. He started noticing that uh, everybody would do their job, or they would do their job exactly how they wanted to, but when they went home, they didn't do anything. They didn't talk to anybody. They uh, didn't have a life outside of their job, and that was their life. And he would go up to people on the streets, and he would start talking to them and saying things like, society of a structured society of people who only do their jobs and only go and talk within their jobs and if they were in their jobs they would say things like oh were you scheduled for an appointment today if they were a doctor or um, let's say so focused on their jobs and they were never talk about anything outside of their jobs because th that's how they were programmed to and it was like talking to a computer you know uh, he realized that everybody was just this computer and finally he decided that uh, he was going to uh, throw away all of his implants that he had uh, after that sat back and observed everybody and he knew something was wrong so he got 
got so curious. One day, he hopped in his airplane, and he decided to go a little bit farther in his airplane and see what was on the other side of the 20-mile radius. Because he'd only been there once, but he'd forgotten. Because you see, every time somebody's broke away from the um, sacred lands, uh, then they're programmed to never think of what it is anymore. So they brainwash them. Uh, they take them when they're five, and they program them to uh, know what they need to know until they're 20. And then they take them away, and then they brainwash them about whatever it is outside of the 20 mile radius of Maplewood Farms. Now, um, he decided he was going to fly out of the uh, 20 mile radius, but as he was flying outside, he noticed these aliens saucers in the sky that were uh, that had a net and these were like three alien flying saucers that had a net and like you know took him in the plane and they brought him back but uh, these were like um, camouflaged in the sky so um, you could think he couldn't see him, he couldn't even see the net, all he could see was that there was this, like, force that was, like, dragging him back into the society, so, um, he, uh, went back into town, and he needed to think of how he was going to get out of this <laughs> society, so, a world beyond our world and nobody sees it nobody knows what's on the outside but I know what's on the outside everybody take their implants out now everybody stop what you're doing and take your implants out now and he would yell at everybody in the streets to we need a gang up we need to get out of this Maplewood Farms and or Maplewood Farms and we need to you know he went on strike and nobody would um, listen to him and so finally he noticed the days that when everybody was sleeping and he wasn't that there was something off and he always knew that there was something off and he needed to fix it so he tried finding ways uh, on getting the implants out of people. And so he failed a couple times. He tried uh, getting, uh, when somebody was sleeping, he tried uh, using a shovel to get it out of his head, but that didn't work. Uh, he tried, you know, just other ways, but then he found that it wasn't even Is just attached to their back and uh, he wondered well why was mine attached you know in my head and why was there this you know thing that I had to put in my head and the reason why is because he was different from everybody else and that he needed one to actually be on his head and there needed to be like a, you know a thing where you could just always put something in there but everybody had theirs on the spine because the spine, there's a nerve that connects to the spine and it goes to the head. And so everybody had it like that, but his wasn't like that. So um, he found out where everybody else's was, and um, which was on their spine, and he took it and he crushed 
crushed it. And that person woke up immediately. He's like, whoa. And he said, wow, what's going on? Where am I? Like, you know, it completely regained consciousness of this person, you know, this human being. but he just doesn't know anything about his life he, like he knows everything but he doesn't know everything about him he doesn't know about what's going on you know he, he knows like simple stuff but he doesn't know like uh, if you've ever seen the movie Wolverine it's like uh, kind of it's like memory loss right you know he has like he doesn't know about his life he doesn't know where he is he doesn't know what's going on but he knows like simple things right okay so Finally, he said that, oh, we're in a society where we're trapped in a 20-mile radius, and on that 20-mile radius is a whole new world, but I don't know what's on that world. It's the sacred lands beyond our world, and he said we need to get everybody in the society, and we need to, when they're sleeping, we need to take their implants out of their spines. against the sacred worlds and we need to get out of here so uh, night by night uh, he uh, Tim would gather up more of these people and he would crush the implants the cyborg implants uh, off the spines one by one and finally everybody in this society was wakened by the time everybody was wakened, um, they had um, ways of how they were going to get out. You know, if you've ever seen the Truman Show, it was, was kind of like that, except for it's not a big dome. It's just a big, um, kind of like a force field type place because this takes place, if I didn't tell you, it takes place like in the future. You know, it, it's just crazy artificial intelligence take over the whole type thing all right so uh, then everybody uh, you know gangs up everybody gets in vehicles you know they make like makeshift you know the construction workers like make like makeshift sort of tanks where they attack attach jackhammers to like trucks and they um, you know they get like uh pickaxes and stuff like that, you know, like big hammers and fire axes from firemen and, you know, water hoses and they get like, um, just a lot of just weapons of mass destruction so that they can, you know, attack this force field. And so, you know, there was only five airplanes and there was, let's say there was only like, 20 cars that they were using so they all smashed in to the uh, they all smashed in to the force field and it just always brought them back you know and so they needed to figure out a way how that how they can um, kind of get outside of this force field, you know, without, you know, being brought back. So, uh, people then uh, thought that maybe there was some way that um, they could get, uh, there was a scientist thought of this way on that you can um, get like this thing called an EMP and basically you can um, supercharge um, you can supercharge the force fields that it, so that it will explode so then the scientists made this huge EMP and he attached it to a, um, a jackhammer or something and they he put it on the front of that 
this truck, like, let's just say it's like a Ford F-350 type of truck, and, um, he drove it into the, he drove it into the wall, and, like, uh, everybody was, like, screaming, and people were just, like, really angry, and they really want to know us on the other side, so finally, like, what this did is this, like, is supercharged the force field so like it exploded and everybody I mean like everybody died except for Tim and this one girl okay that just happened to survive okay because I don't just for whatever reason Literally everything supercharged and exploded, and uh, Tim got to see the outside world. It was this uh, dystopia of this just this society that where there was robots everywhere, and in the skies you would see these alien-like spaceships where there were. Just these cloud cities of um, robots that were just making things like uh, just these really complex computer artificial intelligent machines just everywhere. And um, so he saw that, and then as the EMP traveled, everything exploded and he saw this work of all these robots just completely explode in this huge world which was earth and everything just exploded and then <laughs> he hid in his town some rubble for two weeks and the atmosphere cleared up and it was just him and this girl let's call her Mabel and um, basically Tim and Mabel uh, were like Adam and Eve and they were on this planet and there was no way on like how they could rewrite talk about history or talk about anything because there was nothing to write it down it was like uh he looked at the world and it was like there was trees and there was grasslands everywhere and there was the ocean and it was like everything about this past you know about all these cyborgs and these robots and these artificial intelligent machines taking it's like it was never there and it was just this whole different world so Tim and Mabel had to restart the world over again and it is the world as you see today now uh, obviously that's not a true story on if you're a conspiracy theorist or if you believe in uh, different ways on how you know the world um, started how you know how is it that just in this past you know 600,000 years uh, we have you know humans it just I don't know it, you gotta think you know this this planet's billions years old like four point i think it's like four point something billion years old or maybe it's older than that but um but yeah i mean it could have happened you never know uh obviously it probably did it but uh just i don't know i thought that was a pretty interesting story i never thought i would come up with something like that
so anyway, uh, that's just kind of that part of the story. But just to uh, kind of uh, unwind yourself from that uh, sort of interesting story about a, uh, a dystopian sort of future. session, so I like to call this the uh, second part of the video, uh, kind of just a little treat that I have in store for you guys, so um, I have, uh, it's sort of like this <coughs> stress kind of ball, but it's like a brain, so um, I guess it's kind of cool. Some people really like a lot of tapping sounds, others not so much, others kind of just um, whispering. Depends on um, what trigger kind of suits you, you know. Thanksgiving yesterday, kind of just to bring this into a more um, reality kind of view of the video, at least um, as you're watching this video, it was the day after Thanksgiving 2016. day off at least if you did have a day off if you did it well there's always Christmas I guess even if you don't celebrate it but I think um, you know the holidays are just a really nice time to uh, kind of uh, you know get to uh, stories and uh, maybe not so much like the ones I tell but uh, definitely not so much like the ones I tell but um, 
maybe some, you know, funny stories or some, maybe some sad stories, maybe some, uh, funny, why did you say funny? Maybe some, uh, adventure stories. Those are always some cool stories. Or maybe you guys, uh, don't socialize much. Maybe it's kind of just, uh, small talk. It's okay too because uh, it, you know it is just the uh, presence of family sometimes that can really um, be you know great. So I hope you guys had a good holiday. So 